If you want an ego trip, learn something new, because you can't fucking hurt yourself anymore. There's a special place in the loony bin for people who like to learn new things. I mean, you show up at the psych's office and he's like, ah, so you like to sit down and do things for hours on end, right? That's right. And you like to do things you're bad at for hours on end. That's right. But the thing is, is that we're actually proud of being bad at those things. We're so vain with that. Because in our heads, if we can just get over that period where we're terrible at something, we're gonna be like, Clint Eastwood walk into the bar, flip the half up and go, you wanna see a magic trick? And to get there, we need a plan. Because we can't just go in off shooting our guns willy-nilly if we wanna be Clint Eastwood. We need a system in place, something that tells us what to do and when to do it. Now here's a format that I'm suggesting for how you go from straight jacket to Clint Eastwood in a month. It's going to follow two two-week test periods. The first one is going to be ramping up, and then the second one is going to be doing a sustainable practice. But in the center there, on day 15, we're going to have a test, a public test. And this is the critical part. This is the part that we need to do first. We need to get some friends involved and they need to see if we're Clint Eastwood or that one weird kid at the party wearing toy guns and a little bandana. <laughs> to do this, we need Randy Marsh sized balls. We need to get a wheelbarrow to lug ourselves around because what we're doing is calling our friends and asking them to review us without having done anything. Jesus, Randy, your balls! I know. It is scary, but that's the point. So, write down the name of two friends right now that you can call after this video is over a text and ask them something like this. Hey, I've been getting better at skill. Could we get together in two weeks so you could give me some feedback on it? And by doing this, you are creating this cognitive distance where he's going, oh, I've been getting better at this, but I haven't, so you want to resolve that. And we're getting two friends just like the reason we have two balls, in case one of them drops out. And also, that creates this group mind going where it's harder to let down two people than it is to let down one. Something special happens when you get three people involved in one task. If you just text your friends this, everything else will take care of itself. And once you've done that, you have crossed the Alps and the Rubicon. Alia Yakta Est. And, you know, fuck, we should really learn something right now. Don't worry, don't worry, I have a plan. Don't worry, I have a plan. It's a four step plan, okay? We're going to go through and we're going to create a nice plan. The first step is drawing pictures, two of them. First one is what's your goal? We kind of define this in wish, but getting a clear picture and actually drawing that picture out forces you to be specific. And the second picture that you're going to draw is what does your daily practice look like? For you to get that goal, what would you have to do daily? Just draw a picture of that. And yes, it can be stick figures. Don't worry, I draw stick figures. That's what these are. And it's just your best guess. It forces you to be specific and that starts the planning process. The value of a plan is not so much to follow it, but to go through the thought process. Step two, we're going to go to Target and we're going to buy some Legos. And I'm kind of lying here. We're not going to Target and we're not buying actual Legos. We're just finding Lego blocks inside the skill. And this is from The 4-Hour Chef where he talks about how you deconstruct a skill and get those Lego blocks. Learning something big is hard, but you can always break it down. What goes into learning guitar? Well, you need to know how to play some chords, you need to know how to strum. What goes into a successful conversation? You need to be able to make somebody laugh, be able to stand there confidently without having to say anything, be able to listen attentively. And you can find these blocks in a bunch of ways. You could buy a book or a beginner's course and just skim through it, or you could talk to somebody who's gone through it before. What was their progression through it? What skills really made a difference? What did they start with? What would they recommend that you start with? And think about that final goal and what you really need to go there. The next part is going to be creating the practice. And it's going to be something like warm up, new information, tie it to a big picture, and then fix weaknesses. And this is the ideal schedule. This is, what would you do ideally? On this day, I would learn this skill as like new information, I would practice this song and going through. Or if I was working out on this day, I would do this workout right there. And then also we have this easy section. And that's step four. Create this easy section. Do the exact same thing, what would the practice look like, but for the easy section, where it's on my worst day, where I feel like shit, I've got no time in the world, what would I have time to get done? What would I feel is good enough to get done on those days? And give yourself a lot of slack here. And don't worry about sticking to the plan. That's just a suggestion. That's the ideal. But what we're going to do is instead create a system place, a daily routine that you have to do no matter what. For short-term goals, burn yourself out on them. You don't need this. Instead, just be a firework. Be like Katy Perry and just blow up. 
But for longer term goals, we need a system in place, something that's very sustainable and is a bare minimum, something that we can do day in, day out. If our mother is in the hospital, we can still do the system. If we feel are sick, we can still do the system. No matter what, we always do this one small thing, and that's what we're identifying here. And to get that, we need three parts. Q, routine and reward. This is from the power of habit. Q could be time, it could be location, it could be what you did beforehand, or who else you're with, or how you're feeling. The routine should be one step, one easy step. And that's the reason why we're doing it that way is because if we just have that one requirement, everything else is extra credit. And then finally, have that reward be about the action, not the outcome. Because it ties in a cause and effect rather than just an abstract idea that that's nice. So, for example, if I wanted to write a novel, that's my goal, but the daily practice would be me sitting down and writing one session per day. After I get home from work, I'm going to sit down and write one word. That's right, one word. Everything else is just extra credit, and that encourages intrinsic motivation. If I just get this one thing done, I feel accomplished, and that's what I'm rewarding. It's not, oh, I'm such a good boy. It's, oh, I sat down and I typed up my one word. The best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. And when they do, don't worry about it. Remember, you're this bratty little kid and you're gonna be screaming, Mom, after you get hit that first time. It's going to be difficult. And you're going to be the prodigal son. You're going to go out and eat, drink, and fuck your way to happiness. But because we set up that test, that sword of Donald is hanging over our head and it's always gonna be there. And it's hard to really enjoy yourself when you know that's gonna happen and you will come back to it. So one thing is that when you skip days, which you will do, it doesn't make a difference in the long run. The important part is coming back to it. That's what matters. But when you come back to it, don't skip part of your plan. That way we aren't building this house of cards with one level missing. Instead, we're building a skyscraper. As always, thanks for getting better.